If you happen to go to, uh, someone invite you to come to his house uh, to attend the, the wedding ceremony, that is not the time to talk about the rulings and the regulation of divorce. When someone invites you to come for the baby naming ceremony, that is not the time to talk about the rulings and regulations of Janazah. Isn't that, it's not like that those two subject matters are not important. They are important, but the timing is not right. So that's one of the, uh, you know, I may say conversation we had it until we end up with this topic of today. So I recall it like about 10, 20, 22 years ago, one of our teacher, Ismail, uh, in the first day of Ramadan, he used to give us a grammar, but he come, he said, today I will do tafsir. For throughout the month, you're not gonna have a, a class on Nahaw and so on. And we ask why. He said that we are in the month of Ramadan, it's a month of Quran. And he said, Imam Malik, rahimahullah, he used to teach in the masjid of the Prophet wasallam all of the different subjects that are part of Islam. However, when the month of Ramadan falls in, he will limit himself to only tafsir. They ask him, is it haram to teach something else other than Quran? He said, no, it's just that khilafu al-awla. He is not that which is suitable. So, month of Ramadan is a month of Quran. And so, the, 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 the most suitable subject uh, uh, to be covered in this month should be something in relate to fasting itself and also to Quran. So that's why we end up coming with coming up with these two, fasting and Quran. Right. So what is the link? What is the relationship between fasting and Quran? So today I'm not going to focus so much on fasting. You all know that already. And I don't think if I'll focus so much also on the Quran. I'm not going to do neither one. <laughs> I'll just take something else different. But at the end of the day, inshallah, we'll get the point. So in the ayah recited by Prophet Muhammad, Allah said, Shahru Ramadana alladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'anu hudan linnas. He said, month of Ramadan is a month in which we have revealed the Qur'an as a source of hudan linnas. وَبَيِّنَاتٍ مِنَ الْهُدَى And a clear signs and proofs and evidence from the guidance. Then he said, فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمْ الشَّهْرَ فَلِيَصُمُ Therefore, if anyone who happened to witness the month, then the person must observe the fasting. Before that, he recited the ayah in which he said, Ya ladina amanu, O you who believe, kutiba alaykum Fasting has been prescribed upon you as it was prescribed upon those that came before you so that you will have a Taqwa. So we have a few elements in this all two ayah. One is Quran, take it. Second one is Al Hidayah, Huda, the guidance. The third one is Al Iman, Ya Ladina Aman. The fourth one is fasting. The fifth one is a taqwa. Five elements. Are we do we all have this? Quran, unzila fihi al-Quran, Quran was revealed in it, hudan, as a source of guidance. So we have a Quran, we have a hudan, guidance, and we have an iman because he said, ya ayyuhal ladhina amu, all right? And then after that he said fasting, then after that he said taqwa. So five elements. These are the five elements that I would like to talk about it. Quran, guidance, Iman, fasting, 
in taqwa. That's it. Now Quran is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the definition of the Quran, huwa kalamullah. It is a speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uncreated. All right. It begins with Fatiha and ends with Surah Al-Nas. And by reciting it, one will be rewarded. This is the definition of Quran. Now that Quran, Allah said, I has revealed it as a source of hidayah, guidance. Now my brothers and sisters, ma al hidayah. What is a guidance? So we say al hidayah hi al bayan wa dilala. When you hear guidance is nothing more than explanations and clarifications. To explain something and to clarify for people. That is the hidayah, the guidance. And when Allah said, nas, He made the Quran guidance for people, the guidance that He meant in this ayah is a source of clarification. Allah has a clarify everything in this Quran. Al haq min al batil, the truth from falsehood. He has clarified it with evidence, signs, to a point that the human beings, your mind, will see it as much as your eyes can see a physical thing. I don't know if you understand. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala happened to clarify things in this Quran with al-alamat wal adilla to a point that human beings, your heart or your mind, both are the same. Heart is the mind, mind is the heart. Now, when I say that you are thinking about the brain, I'm not talking about brain. Okay. So we see things with our hearts. Things that are metaphysical. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this Quran, He has explained things in detail. What is right, what is wrong. What should be done and what should not be done. He has set the principles. And He gives us the picture of ideal human beings. An ideal community, an ideal country or world in this Quran. And he made it so clear to a point that you can see with your heart and mind just as the way that you can see a physical thing. And this clarification is Allah's hujja, his evidence against humanity. Allah will not mislead anyone or punish anyone unless he has done this for you. I don't know if you understand. To make things so clear. That's why Allah said, وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُضِلَّ قَوْمًا بَعْدَ إِزْهَدَاهُمْ حَتَّى يُبَيِّنَ لَهُمْ مَا يَتَّقُونَ Allah will never let people to go astray until he makes things so clear to them. Then when they refuse to live by it, then he will miss, he will punish them as a result of them turning their back on the right path. Alright? So this is called Hidayatu al Bayan. So this is when Allah said He has revealed this Quran in the month of Ramadan to make it as a source of guidance for the entire humanity. I don't know if you get it. Do we get this point? That's the point number one. Now, after this bayan, this clarification, and this uh, explanation, then comes hidayatu at-tawfiq. All right. The guidance of uh, acceptance. Wanting to leave 
or accepting things that when Allah said when you are looking for a right things this is how it looks like this is it this is it this is it wow yeah that's right that's right I agree that is called you accept things the way that Allah defined them to be and this is the beginning of Iman I don't know if you understand it's called Hidayatu at Tawfiq. Because people define what is right, what is wrong. And Allah defined also what is right, what is wrong. Right. So for you to take Allah's definition, that is called Hidayatu at Tawfiq, like a success. You have become successful now. But this thing's second level of Hidayah cannot precede the first one. First one, to know them first, to be able to identify them, then a second step is to accept them for who they are. It's called Hidayatu at Tawfir. Now these are two independent guidance, so sometimes people do get confused in them. People do get confused in them. But don't be confused. When Allah said to the Prophet, You cannot guide who you wish or who you love. And another way he said it, Indeed, you guide people to the straight path. You may think there is a contradiction. The first one is you explain things to for people on the right way. Now, for them to accept it or not accept it, that is not in your hand. So he's confirming one hidayah, and he's negating there another hidayah. So if you do not know the difference, you may think that Quran is contradicting himself. Allah is saying that the Prophet guides people, and there he said that you cannot guide people again. No. The guidance here is talking about explanation and detailing things. And the second is to accept them. Do we get that part, inshallah? So Quran is here as a guidance for the entire humanity. That is the general guidance that meant that we meant by explanation. Now it's only guidance for the righteous people that is Hidayatu at Tawfiq wal Qabul. Now when you accept that, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will create a nur, a light in your heart. That light is what is called an iman, the belief. When you accept that yes, idols should not be worshipped, that makes sense. We should be dutiful to our parents. Yes, I can agree with that. Wow, we should be uh, kind to one another. That's right. So that is what is called an iman. You have accepted Allah's definition for the things. Then that is what is called Allah will create the iman in your heart. He will make it lovely to you and He will beautify it for you. All right, do we get that? And that's why Allah said, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, now kutiba alaykum usiyam. Kama kutiba ala ladheena min qablikum. Now I give you a prescription. This prescription is called to fast. Now this fasting is a bridge that takes you to become al-muttaqu, pious people. My brothers and sisters, the piety, people will give you a different definition for it. It simply means the human being that lives by principles given by Creator. He doesn't live by personality and desires. That's it. People of Taqwa, it simply means those that lives by what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set as parameters, as a principles. They don't live by personalities and desires.
<clears throat> so to help you and I to become that ideal human beings, we need a training. And that training method is fasting. So fasting helps you to give you a control over your desires. Right. And then once you learn that, then you become that ideal human beings which happen to be painted in the Quran. Quran is just theoretical teaching of how Allah wants you to be. And the fasting is practicing those teachings in reality. That's it. That's it. Simple as that. And the Quran is just theory. This is how Allah wants a human being to be. Don't lie. Don't backbite. Don't scream. Don't yell at others. And then don't violate their rights. And do not let the desire take over your spirit. Because we are made out of two. All right? The body and the spirit. Human beings is made out of those two. And it's done by choice. Because to live on this earth, we have to deal with two. We have to deal with the earth, and we have to deal also with the heaven. So Allah took some part of the earth, which is our physical being. And he took some part from the heaven, which is our spirit. He put them together. Now if you look at the history, there is a struggle between the spirit and the body. Any fight that took a place from day one till now is in between these two. Now some people, they have completely kill the spiritual aspect out of themselves. They become physical, all by material and desire. And that is the time that we are living in it right now. All right? Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And there was a time also when the spirituality took over the body, the physical. And those times also has passed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want this to take control over the other one. Other, no, Allah wants us to have a, a balanced life. Right. Today I'm not reading too much of ayah from Quran and here and there. Uh, it's simple, brothers and sisters. Allah does not want angels on earth. They don't disobey Allah. They have nothing to do with the food with the water, with the spouse, husband or wife, the car, they don't have nothing to do with that. But Allah wants this earth to be, to be cultivated, to be populated, to be utilized. So he put a creating being that has a boat. <clears throat> but he chose not to make the animals. He made it human beings. He made it human beings. So that human being throughout the year, Sometime we eat, we drink, we go after our desires, then the desire has a tendency to take over our spirituality. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, there's nothing as beautiful as Islam. The fasting is just the right prescription. Now, Muslims, we tend to focus so much on the spirituality, we neglect the dunya, then we are behind. And the others also, they focus so much on the dunya and they tend to neglect the spirituality, then that's it. They leave for their desire. They kill for the desire. They eradicate an entire nation just for their own desires. So they become animals, even worse than animals. You can barely see a lion killing another lion. You can barely see a lion killing another lion. Almost impossible. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell us, those who do not want to go by the principles of Allah, they are just like it. their own animals, or the animals are even better than them, the cattle. 
So when you happen to live according to the standard of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then your status will be higher than that of the angels. Because you have a desire that is pulling you down, but you are able to get yourself out of that. But if you don't live by that again, and then the physic, your body took over you, you become lower than animals. Because you have something in you that is telling you this is right, this is wrong. But you ignore that. And the animals, they do not have that. So then you are acting like them, then they are better than you. So this is the, the simple link between fasting and Quran. If you read the Quran, he's just telling you and I how Allah wants a human being to be. He wants a human being to be the person that lives by principles and guidelines, not by desires and personality. Now look around anywhere you want. The biggest problem of the Yahud, they lived by personality. We just by simply being us, we are the loved one of Allah and we are his chosen one. Regardless of what we do, it doesn't matter. You see? That's where they went wrong. But we Muslims, no. I, I, I cannot just say, yes, I'm a man. It's not enough. What do you do? We will judge you, grade you based upon how obedient you are to the principles of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why when the Prophet وسلم, passed away, what happened? What did Abu Bakr say? What did Abu Bakr say? Right. If you are about the personality, then your work is over. The person of the Prophet وسلم, he's gone now. He's gone. But if he's about the principles, all right, he's just guiding us to those principles of Allah, then they are everlasting. The one who gave his Allah, he's still alive. That's it. It's the same thing applied also. You will see at the end of the Ramadan, who will disappear. Many brothers, is that about the principles or is it about just the personality, the time? Most of us is about the time. While Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just giving us the principles. Your life should be like this. But I don't want to push so much on the spirit that it will kill the needs of body. I just want to give you a balance. That's why he gave us a prescription. It lasts just for 30 days. So you take what you need it, you practice it throughout, throughout the 11 month of the year. And then he does not want us to do our fasting to be continuous. That's why he started from sun up till sun down. It's well measured. Is a prescription that happened to be prescribed by the creator of the heaven and earth and the one who created you and the one who created me. If we take this prescription and use it accordingly, wallahi, we will see the impact of it. I said one thing one day, I don't know if you recall it. I think one of my son was sick for whatever. I don't know if he did something. and. We went to the hospital, and then after that we came home. So they said, okay, this is Tylenol, this is ibuprofen. So every four hours. So they gave us the one that they want to give it to us in the hospital. They said, okay, we'll send the prescription to the pharmacy, all right? So four hours immediately, you give the other one. I said, okay. I came home, I was tired. I said, I will go and sleep a little bit, then wake up later on and go pick up the prescription. And then, I couldn't wake myself up. And then I slept, passed through the time, and here is the baby crying after four hours. He started to feel the pain. I said, SubhanAllah. This is something that a human being, a doctor, measured. It. it happened to be accurate. What do you think about Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala's measuring? It's the same. That's why Salat, he gave it to us the way that it will not cripple us. 
If Allah were to say that we pray 50 times a day, what else can you do to sustain your worldly life? You will be all about praying. That's why he gave us five times so you can pray and go and take care of your human needs. Yes. It's the same exact way again. He gave us the fasting. I'm just giving you enough doses that can take you through. All right. So the burdens that will just focus so much on the spiritual aspect of their life and forget about the dunya, that's not what Allah wants from us. And those who will focus so much on dunya and forget about the spiritual aspect, that's not what Allah wants from us. He wants a balanced human being that will say, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan wa fil hasanatan. So this is the problem with us today. Islam wants a balanced human being. So the fasting is a prescription that helps you and I to get out of the servitude of desires and personalities, all right? To be following the principles given to us by Allah. So once you go through that training for 30 months, or 30 days, sorry, then it will help you to become an ideal human being which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the, the, the painting or he, the Quran paint them up for us. Now to be that kind of human beings, the fasting helps you through. At the end, Allah said, if you fast as you should, at the end of the day, you become that ideal human being. People of Taqwa. They will forgive others. Now Allah went on, he said, وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا فَعَلُوا Help me, help me, help me. فَعِشَ <laughs> them. And again, when they happen to commit indecency, subhanAllah, and this is a very important. It's telling us that they are not angelic people. They are human beings made out of flesh, and spirit. So sometime that other side of them can take over it, but it will not last forever. And they will not persist on doing that wrong things after knowing that it's wrong. Ulaika, help me. Jazaum. Jazaum. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and such people, those that have this characteristic, they spend and then they control their anger, they pardon people, and then they are muhsilun, all right? And then of course when they made a mistake, they make a zikrullah, and they ask Allah's forgiveness, and they do, they, do not, they do not persist on doing the wrong things after being aware that this was wrong, all right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive them, and he'll give them jannah to the That's the the goal, the objective. So I see that is already 620. I will stop. If there is a question, I will take it. If not, then this will be the end of the lecture of today. So my brothers and sisters, Quran is basically to tell us how Allah wants a human being to be, but in a theory, right? And how Allah wants human beings to be? He wants you and I to have a control over our desire, not our desire to have a control over us. He wants us to be able to lead by the guidelines of Allah. And you cannot do that if you are controlled by your desire. So to be a person of taqwa, you will have to be in charge, not your desire to be in charge of you. So what can help you from point A to B, that is you have to walk, you can't fly, you have to walk. So that bridge is the fasting. The fasting 
While doing so, we are being trained on a daily basis how to control what we desire. If you practice that for a good 10 years, you don't look at haram, though you want it, you love it, you enjoy it, but you know the minute I do it, then I am diminishing the reward of my fasting to a point at the end of the day, I may not even find nothing in my bucket. Then you will stop. I wanted to talk about that brother so bad because he or she made me mad. She got on my nerve. But if you do it, then you ain't fasting no more. You ain't fasting no more. Oh my God, I hate her. I just can't let that anger to go. Ibn Masud said that we will not dare to welcome the moon of the month of Ramadan while having a hatred in our heart towards one single person. So you are in battle with yourself. You are trying to learn how to become that ideal human being. So you are basically practicing the teaching of the Quran. And after one month going through that process, then you should come out as that ideal human being. And that trait should continue with you throughout the year. Now after 11 months, then Allah knows that the doses that you've taken is gone. All right? So I want to give you again another prescription. That's why he did, he prescribed it once a year. But in between, if you want to take a sip, here and there you can do it. All right? That is a uh, day of Arafah. That is Yom uh, Ashura. That is uh, three days out of month. But all those are optional to you. Okay? So that's it. That's the link, as Allah knows the best, between Quran and the fasting. Now, I don't want to go this break the fast, this doesn't break the fast. You heard all that. That's and the questions we have. Man. That's the question. I'll take it, but that's it. And then I hope I answer the questions. I, I mean, I hope I was able to uh, do a little bit of justice your time. I thought it was going to be 10, 15 minutes to talk. I did not know that people would come and sit down and listen to me. I was trying to take the note, but they said that it can be a six. So I said, OK, let me just come and sit down and talk. Thank you. All right. Huh? Thank you. So, Jazakumullah, thank you.